Hey friends, welcome back. We're going to do another video. Hopefully it's going to be a nice and simple <clears throat> painting for you guys. Again, it's going to be an impressionistic style painting as usual. So I have an 8x10, <clears throat> excuse me, 8x10 canvas panel. Okay. Um, let me tell you about the colors that I have. Uh, it doesn't matter the brand, it's just I have a mixed brand here. I have Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Orange. Not, I don't use it very often, but I'm starting to like using orange from time to time. Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, and Titanium White. This is the acrylic painting we'll be doing. It is acrylics. Sorry, I just forgot to mention that. So we're gonna do a drawing. I figured this would be like a simple, simple photo uh, for you guys to, you know, try and do and replicate. So uh, first what I'm gonna do is start with a drawing, ultramarine blue. Comes down this far, goes up this high comes down this far. Okay. And perhaps it should have been higher. All right, and as you can see, we're gonna have a bird here eventually. So what I'm gonna start out with is doing the clouds, and then we're gonna paint around the clouds. Because the cloud pretty much has my lightest value. So I'm gonna see how much darker do I have to go um, after that. I'll gauge everything around the slightest part of the sky here. So let's go white. A little bit of cad orange, maybe a little bit of yellow. Let's spray. It's hot down here in South Florida, so my acrylics with time you'll know how to gauge how much water you need so let's start you may not see the color very well because I have a tone background and that's okay you eventually will break I already see some of the orange in the sky so we're going to transition from orange in quick su succession Add a little bit of red, maybe that's too red. Add a little bit of white. I'm using a filbert brush, it's a number 12 filbert. It's not an expensive brush, just one of those cheap. One that you get at Michael's, it's a Royal Lang Nickel. Okay. So, and I always say in my videos, uh, when you're painting with acrylics, remember that it will dry a little bit darker. So make sure you compensate for that. There's another little cloud here. And remember, this is just a reference photo. I got this on the internet, on Facebook. Um, so you don't have to be beholden to exactly what the photo shows. I mean, you could come close to it, all right? So don't kill yourself making every detail the same. So now we're gonna work on a darker 
shades of that cloud. So what I'm gonna do is probably use pretty much the background color plus a little bit of red, alizarin crimson, maybe a little bit of burnt umber to get this purple and a little bit of ultramarine, uh, ultramarine, uh, titanium white. So uh, let me just show you. So here's our ultramarine blue. Make enough of this. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of crimson. You don't need too much crimson because it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty powerful color. That, let's use a little bit of burnt umber. Let's see how, that's probably too dark and I need to have it more red. And titanium white. Let's check this out, still too dark. I want to keep it within the same value and when I say value I mean how dark or how light about the same value as what I just put down for the highlights okay so maybe a little bit more white more red I can see into this Maybe a little bit orange. There you go. Actually, even more orange. I can see some orange poking through there. Put some red, white. Same thing over here. All right, so now let me work. Now basically I'm blending, going over what I just did. Trying to make it close to, basically what I'm doing is transition colors. I'm trying to get the words out of my mouth and paint at the same time. Making a transition color. So I'm just using red, orange, And I'm letting some of the background color show through. Okay. Now, we're gonna start working on clouds above here. So we're gonna do a lot of titanium white. ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of burnt umber. So let's test out this color. Seems to be about right. Notice how the colors are starting to come through now.
let some of this burnt umber show through. crimson in this color here towards the base maybe a little bit of burnt umber tone it down white So now I can gauge my colors a little bit better. By doing so, okay. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, ultramarine blue, a little bit of crimson, make this purplish mixture here, a little bit of burnt umber, really tone down this I'm just going color over color. Just going back over what I did until I feel that I got it right. And basically it's blending one over the other. And I just do it quickly as you can notice. I see some nuances of gray here. So what I did was mix some orange into this mix here. And like I said, it's back and forth, back and forth with the colors, okay? Back and forth, back and forth until you get it. this orange a little bit more. Go pure cat orange. With a little bit of red perhaps. Just paint really quick what I see. Now remember, with acrylics, you, you paint in layers. Okay, so you notice how I started with a really light layer, and then I started going back over and over. Uh, I guess what you call this is just like your push and pull method, you know? Meaning you add color, take away, add Put in some pure reds. Same here. Until you're satisfied with what you see. Okay. I see more reds around the edges to give this 
more of a 3D look. See how I'm making these edges a little bit darker red here. And I'm not, you know, being too careful about it either. And it's not like oils where you could blend that easily. I mean, there are ways to blend, but um, this is, like I said, more of an impressionistic way of painting. So let me go back over the clouds a little bit more. Maybe add a little bit of lizard crimson, maybe more white. Nope, too light. A little bit of burnt umber. Let's go about this. I'm going to shape. Shape these clouds a little bit more. Remember, you can make these clouds look however you want them to look. You could cut into the clouds. That's what you call cutting in and sculpting. Now, as you can see back here, the clouds and uh, how dark or how light, they're almost approximately the same value. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white and they mix into each other. See, I'm using some of the background color just to go over ever so slightly mix it in basically like dry brushing over and I'm not putting too much pressure just very light pressure light pressure really what's gonna happen is that your eyes is what's gonna do the mixing Okay, that's what a lot of the Impressionists did. They painted, painted in a certain way where a lot of the work is your eye did all the mixing by putting colors next to each other. Just sculpting that cloud a little bit. So if you ever want to paint outside in acrylics, you just want to capture the moment really fast, that's one way to do it. Now I could have gotten a brighter, brighter orange here had this been like more of a white background, but that was not the point. So, all right. So now that we've got that pretty much out of the way, let's start painting the roof. Actually, I could even work this up even a little bit more if I really wanted to. Let's see.
sometimes you just get caught up Use your finger to smooth it out if you want. There you go. start working on that roof. Ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of burnt umber. It's a little bit darker than that sky. Let's see. So basically just ultramarine blue, a little bit of uh, burnt umber, and a little bit of white. Very little white. of the house. I guess so you got your soffit, I believe that's what it's called. work on the rest of the house. Burnt umber, crimson, maybe a little bit of blue here. Now I'm going the same direction as the wood. Wood grain. Remember, acrylics doesn't cover as well as oil, so you might have to do like two pass, maybe. And it's okay if some of the 
base color shows. I know I tell you guys that all the time. that cloud here. Now we have pretty much the basics. So let me put in some of this nuance of um, barn color here. I'm adding some warmth by adding orange. There you go. Now let's darken some of these lines up by putting <coughs> um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. I'm gonna make some darker post. Or should I say wood slats? Another thing is I'm using a rough 
canvas here, so um, do you make good covering lines? It's kind of hard here. I'm not trying to make excuses, but just saying. And plus, this is mainly for demo purposes. If I want to tighten this up, or I could, but this is just for. To show you the main idea of what goes behind the process here. So let me see. Let's work a little bit on that roof. Um, actually, let me. Not everywhere, just some of the highlight on the wood here. Right. Let me put a little bit of highlight on that roof. Same thing with those slats. So you notice we just painted the base color of the roof, which was a dark initial color. And then we just went with the highlighted slats. I see a little bit of red in there somewhere. Right in here. I'd go back over with some darker colors. Fix this one here, it's not even.
that's the soffit. Make it dark in between. take my filbert, my number 12 filbert, and I'm going to make that shadow under the roof by using burnt umber and the uh, ultramarine blue and the burnt umber, put a lot of white, and then we're going to make this shadow right under. Now the colors are very diluted, okay? So let's start right here. There you go. Put a lot of water. And actually there's some here. It looks like Feather it out a little bit, making it smooth a little bit. There you go. I'm just taking my damp brush and just going up and down. There you go. having fun here with the cloud if you're not happy with something you could go back over it I mean nobody says you can't draw this bird. Hopefully I can get it right without messing up. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber. So he's like
you see how rough this canvas is. All that's still using a big brush. Now I'm going to put some nuance on the bird. I believe that's an ibis. If I can do this, there you go. It only shows one foot, but I'm going to show a second foot, right? A uh, second leg right here. bottom of that soffit. There you go, just darken it up a little bit. Much looks like it, eh? Put more of a highlight on that roof here. That was a quick, did this in uh, 48 minutes. Now I know it's not about how fast you go. Speed isn't so much, it's just trying to capture the moment, basically. It's all I'm trying to do. I know I can go back to my easel and uh, redo this painting, take my time, refine it a little bit more, and probably rework it a little bit different way. Um, but like I said, this was more of an exercise to show you. Uh, if you want to do a quick sketch of a larger painting or you want to paint out in the field, you want to paint quick before the moment changes. You saw how fast I did this. It's really too much without thinking, you know. You just want to cover your canvas first with the proximate values. Once you got that covered, then you go in with your midtones and your highlights and just rework, push and pull, meaning, you know, add color and then, you know, meaning go lighter, darker, lighter, darker, gray down some colors to make some others stand out. It's basically all it comes down to. 
all right? So I muted this blue here so that these oranges, these colors of orange and reds will stand out more than uh, had I just done like a straight blue and white. It would not have looked right, okay? Muting colors is like a, a trick not oftenly talked about. Because when you put too many um, high chroma colors together, they will tend to clash and competing for um, existence, competing for attention, should I say. But when you have muted colors, muted colors tend to work great together. There's not much competition. The colors, all of them are low key. And once you do that and you want to start putting these highlights, these highlights are the ones that are going to be really the attention grabber because you look, you're going to see like, oh my God, look at these bright, these bright lights here, here and there. So I, I kind of hope that makes a little bit of sense to you. Um, so you don't want to do, you know, right out of the bottle, I mean, right out of the tube colors. You always want to mute them down either with the, with the complementary color or if you want to make yourself a gray, to gray down all your colors, you can make yourself a batch of ultramarine blue and uh, burnt umber with titanium white. Put that to the side. Add as much white or as little white as you want, depending on the value of gray that you want. And just go in there and dip into that color to mute some of your other colors. Or you could use the complementary colors. You know, that's all you have to do. And uh, so I hope you learned something today. You know, um, if you didn't understand anything or you need help, uh, leave it in the comment and then I will try to answer the best as I can. And uh, again, you know, thank you guys all for your support and uh, hopefully I'll have another painting for you. Uh, so I'm keep looking at simple paintings that I can do real fast online uh, so I can show you so you know sometimes when you get into too, too much complex paintings it's kind of hard to follow and too much to learn so I figure I'd slow down the pace do something that's like very minimal in subject and just teach you step by step the process and as you get better you could always add more and more and more to it and progress from there the point here is just to get you up and started and um, show you the process and keep it simple as simple as you possibly can Thank you again, and I wish you guys a great day. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.